How's it going everybody? Today I'm going to help you make the decision of is it better to have one 36 volt battery or three 12 volt batteries in series for your trolling motor application. The way we're going to do this is we're going to walk through 36 volts, a single 36 volt battery, two of them in parallel, and then we're also going to talk through three 50 amp hour or three 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And the idea is to help you make a good decision for your setup. You may already have a 36 volt setup in your boat and you're just gonna swap out and put in new batteries and go. You may be trying to rig out a brand new boat. You're starting from scratch. So I'm gonna help you with what the pros and cons of each one are so we can make a good call. So when we're talking through 36 volt batteries and the 12 volts, we're gonna talk through just some basic lead time batteries. If you wanna scale it up from there, it's still kind of the same relative cost difference. If you go to an Ionic or Powerhouse or Miller Tech or whatever you wanna put, on your setup. Well, we're just gonna baseline lead time across the board for all these comparisons to try to keep it as consistent as I can. So a single 36 volt, 50 amp hour battery with Bluetooth is about $400. That's 50 amp hours. It's gonna give you about what you would get out of three lead acid deep cycle batteries. So that's gonna be plenty for most everybody. Now, unless you're running big current, you're running multiple tournament days and you wanna make sure you have plenty of plenty of plenty of capacity, then you may consider something more. 50 amp hours is gonna get the far majority of people just fine. This boat runs a 36 volt, 60 amp hour battery. And I don't think I've ever used more than like 30% in an entire like 10 to 12 hour day of fishing. So do with that information as you will. So if you wanted to double that and say, you know what, I want some redundancy or I want more power. Uh, we're gonna have 36 volts at 50 amp hours times two batteries, that's 800 bucks. So now I want you to focus on is the volume or the packaging space. That single battery is about 740 cubic inches of space. That's a group 31 battery. And then if you have two of those, it's 1400 and change. So two group 31 size batteries. So if you imagine an installation where you're tight on space, you can get 100 amp hours at 36 volts in parallel, which is two group 31 slots. That's a lot of power. That's like I said, that's an enormous amount of power. This boat runs the 160 amp hour battery that's a group 31. I need it in the small tracker, right? This boat's not made for 36 volts ever. So I've got just two batteries running this entire boat. So that's the 36 volt lineup. Let's jump over to the 12. So for the 12 volt setup, we've got it at 50 amp hours on the left. So you've got three 50 amp hour batteries. And on the right, you've got three 100 amp hour batteries. Both of them are with Bluetooth, kind of try to get apples to apples. 540 bucks for the three 50 amp hour batteries. And you're about a thousand cubic inches of volume. So if you remember back on the 36 volt setup, that was about 740. So one group, 31 battery on the 36 volt setup. And when you go 50 amp hours, you got three of those. They're also kind of hard to hold down. There's not really a size tray that you can go get for those. So you're gonna have to rig up something to get three 50 amp hours in your boat and hold them down securely. So like I said, on the right, we've got three group 31, 100 amp 100 amp hour batteries, and that's gonna be about 2,250-ish cubic inches. So three group 31 trays to get you 100 amp hours with 12 volt batteries. I know there's a lot of numbers here. Or if you wanted 100 amp hours out of 36 volt batteries, you only need two. So I'll summarize this all on a chart here in just a second, but I wanna talk you through it first. So those are your two options. So as you can compare them side to side, right on the left side of your screen is 36 volts, 50, 100 amp hour. On the right side is 12 volts, 50, and 100 amp hour. You can see how the specs line up. Now there's gonna be more to it than that. So let's talk through charging for a second. So let's just say your scenario one, you've got 12 volt batteries in your boat and you've got a modern charger that'll do lithiums and you wanna go over to, uh, from lead acid to lithiums and your charger will already do it, easy. That's a swap out, drop them in, hit the button, and now you're set to lithiums. That's cheap, that's quick. Your boat's already wired for it. Now, if you're starting off with a brand new boat, you've got nothing, what do I start with? Going to 36 volts, probably a good idea if you already need to buy a charger. Uh, you're getting some improvement out of that. The fewer batteries you have, in my opinion, the more reliable it is. You, you lose the redundancy factor of having multiple batteries, but the more, the in summary, the part can't fail if it's not on the boat. So when I see people talk about, oh, well, I got three and I've got some redundancy, I can swap one out, I can do this. Yeah, that's great if you're gonna be you know, MacGyver and working on your boat while you're on the water in the middle of a tournament, you've got 30 pounds on the boat and you're trying to get up and run. Like, that's all great when you're on, you know, online and sitting on the computer, but in the practical sense, you're probably not gonna do that. Unless you're fishing for 10, $100,000, 
the redundancy, most motor, some motors won't run on 24 volts anyway, so you can't just rewire it and run it on 24 volts. I kind of get hung up on that. Anyway, that's a sidebar. Back to charging. Uh, like I said, if you've already, if you start from scratch and you and you got a light or a tight installation, 36 volts is the way to go there. If you already need a charger, now there's really only two options for charging a 36 volt. That's a dedicated single bank charger. Now some companies, Miller Tech, I think has one. Uh, I'm sure Monster, uh, Lee Time, have a two bank charger that is one bank that's 36 volts and one bank that's 12 volts for the cranking battery. Uh, that works fine, but if you run more than one 36 volt battery, it's going to take quite a while to charge that joker up. So just think about it. You, unless you're running two single bank chargers, the charge time is going to be what you're struggling with because you've got a huge amount of capacity on your boat. So let's summarize all those words and all those numbers with some colors because <laughs> honestly, that's a lot quicker and a lot easier to communicate. So I'm cheating here with my phone. Performance wise, they're all the same. To me, no changes whatsoever. They're all going to do the job you want. The voltage is going to be just fine. You're talking the same chemistry cells. It's just in how they're wired within your boat. No concerns there. Capacity wise, of course, the 50 amp hours are going to be less than the 100 amp hours. That seems obvious, but uh, do with that as you will. I think one 36 volt battery or 50 amp hours at 36 volts is fine for the very, very far majority of people that are using their boat. Unless you're big water, unless you're ocean, unless you're major currents spot locking for hours on end, that's going to do you just fine. Redundancy is where things start to get a little questionable. So redundancy is kind of like that, you know, MacGyver situation where if you had something go down, you can you can wire in a switch or you can rewire it. That's all great. Um, redundancy, the best solution is going to be two 36 volt batteries, and that is going to be better than three 12 volt batteries for the for the fact that I said earlier, parts can't fail if they're not on the boat. So if I have two 36 volt batteries, I have two BMSs that are, you know, call them a 1% failure rate. So those are two opportunities for those parts to fail and leave you stranded or whatever. If I have three batteries, I now have three. It's 50% increases, increase in the number of BMSs on my boat that have a, a, a potential of failing. So again, if it's not on the boat, it can't fail. I favor two batteries over the three from a redundancy standpoint. That is gonna be what you find in a lot of professional boats, very much for that reason. Cost-wise, your best bang for buck is going to be a single 36-volt battery if you don't already need a charger. If you got to buy a charger anyway, it's probably going to go the other way to the 50-amp-hour 12-volt batteries. Um, packaging, a single 36-volt is a good way to go. That's a Group 31 battery. You can save a lot of space if you're taking out three lead acids and swapping it with the one. So a lot to be said for that. The two 36-volts is still going to be better than three 12 volts, just overall packaging space. And the absolute worst is three 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries. Honestly, like I said, unless you're just swapping out batteries A to B, you already got a charger. That would not be my first choice. And then charging, we kind of talked through that. Uh, definitely easier to charge 12 volt batteries. Chargers are plenty, three banks, four banks, you already got one, whatever. Getting a charger for a 12 volt battery is a lot easier than a 36 volt. So that is a potential risk or maybe a potential cost to consider. Now, if you're wondering about what batteries to buy, I've got a 36 volt battery here that I would recommend. And then I've got some 12 volts that you can take a look at under $300. Like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you on the next one.